Drafts like this are leaked, guys, for, for one of two reasons. Uh, the first, obviously, is DEFCON 1 to liberals that abortion law could be returned to the states and to start mobilizing now. And it's virtually guaranteed you're going to see massive protests in cities across the country probably as early as this weekend if you're reading things online and, and the buzz that's happening there. And, and now this story, from a media perspective, this debate will dominate the news cycle for many days and weeks to come. I mean, uh, wait, wait till you start to see the headlines and the op-eds, uh, particularly once, because this broke around 9 p.m. Eastern last night, so probably more like Wednesday, you're going to see hyperbole like you would not believe. And, and SCOTUS blog, which it, it's an independent news source for the Supreme Court, uh, usually fairly vanilla as far as what's going on on the high court. Here's what it said about this leak. It is really, really speaks volumes. Quote, it's impossible to overstate the earthquake this will cause inside the court in terms of the destruction of trust among the justices and staff. This leak is the gravest, most unforgivable sin, unquote. Millions of Americans nationwide are rallying to protect abortion rights after a leaked Supreme Court decision showed that Republicans are finally making good on their decades-long promise to overturn Roe v. Wade. But Republicans aren't concerned with how ending abortion rights will affect all of those women. They're mainly concerned with a leaker. I mean, just imagine this. The Supreme Court, you guys know this, always was held in the highest regard from a public approval perspective when compared to other government entities and entities in general. Uh, and now th this shatters that whole illusion that even that's a place where drafts like this uh, can continue to go forward until they're presented officially. We have leakers everywhere, apparently, and this leaker did this, obviously, intentionally to mobilize liberals and and to maybe perhaps intimidate these judges into changing their positions already after the public backlash, at least from the pro-life uh, crowd or pro-choice crowd, excuse me, uh, begins to mobilize, guys. Joe, we have reaction from some prominent Republicans and commentators. We have Mark Levin uh, tweeting, quote, the leak continues the Marxist war on the Constitution and the civil society. And Andy McCarthy says, if this story is true, the court should issue its opinion right away. Otherwise, the, the disgraceful leak wins. I think really what we have here are two different issues, right? We have the fact that this decision on Roe versus Wade may come out and really be controversial and, and turn things up. But we also have the leak itself, regardless of the issue, the fact that the leak happened. Now, having all but rolled back abortion rights nationwide, Republicans are in the mood to talk about anything else. On Fox News, conservative columnist Joe Concha laid out the latest Republican conspiracy theory, saying that the leaker, who remember, nobody knows, is for sure, seriously, a liberal, and they're out to destroy America. It didn't take long for that crazy theory to make it to Congress, where Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell blamed a liberal agitator for leaking the Supreme Court decision saying they hated the rule of law. And that worked its way down to the Daily Wire, where far-right columnist Matt Walsh said that the leak was 100 million times worse than the January 6th insurrection, because liberals did this one. Republicans won't reveal how they know the leaker is a liberal, just that they're certain he or she is. And Republicans have a good reason to keep spinning this story, because every minute that the media is talking about a liberal leaker, they aren't discussing how complicit Republicans have been in the incredible damage about to be caused by the Supreme Court when it repeals Roe v. Wade. And by keeping Washington focused on something it loves more than anything, a witch hunt for a leaker, Republicans can coast into the midterm elections without having to meaningfully defend their positions. And that's great news for Republicans, because they certainly can't. In a move that surprises nobody, Democrats are still struggling with how to message a seemingly slam-dunk issue. For his part, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has said that he's going to hold a vote to enshrine Roe v. Wade into law. That's unlikely to pass, given that the Senate will not remove the filibuster to do it. Schumer has also called out Republicans for focusing on this liberal leak fantasy, instead of addressing the real damage the Supreme Court is about to do to women. And Joe Biden has also stood up strongly in support of abortion, though without saying the word. And that shouldn't surprise those who are paying attention. Joe Biden hasn't actually held a major event or given a major speech about abortion in his entire time in office. And now, with the Supreme Court almost certain to gut abortion rights, 
at an election just down the line. Democrats have precious little time to get their messaging straight while fighting Republicans on almost every other imaginable issue. Faced with a Supreme Court decision they can't hope to defend, Republicans are doing what they do best. They're spinning conspiracy theories. This is nothing new for the Republicans. On January 6th, the popular theory was that the entire attack was staged by Antifa liberals from Seattle and Portland. Or take the Sandy Hook shooting, where Alex Jones and Republicans said that the dead children there were just crisis actors paid for by George Soros and the liberals. Republicans are running from this Supreme Court decision because they know how bad it's likely to be. This is among the first times in American history when a Supreme Court has stripped rights away from American citizens. And while that may fly in the authoritarian Republican Party, most Americans value their freedom. But as long as Republicans can keep the media and Democrats focused on conspiracy theories, they can keep attention off their unprecedented war on women's rights. It's up to Democrats and the media to break that silence. Whether they can is a different question.